I just love a rainy day. Don't you, Otto? Well, I tend to prefer sunny days, but this isn't bothering me one bit. I know, bud. We get to stay cozied up inside the house and listen to the rainfall. All the plants drinking up that awesome rainwater. And all the bullfrogs soaking up that rain. Glad you're sitting with us, Fred. Oh, I can't pass up a chance to just laze around the house on a rainy day. It's beautiful, isn't it? Sure is. <sighs> ah. Ah. Well, we shouldn't dally any longer. Let's get the show started, Toby. All right. It's a Saturday show. 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 Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Saturday Show, AADL TV's one and only Saturday morning kids variety show. My name is Toby, and I'm Otto. And boy, Otto, it seems like us at The Saturday Show, we just can't stay away from water. Sure seems like it, Toby. Yep, today we're using the beautiful springtime rain as our inspiration. It's just so soothing. It is. Ah. 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 I'll help us out here, Toby. Let's get this show started by going to Kashi and Christopher for the word of the day. I just love looking at a newspaper on a rainy day. <laughs> oh, I know, Kashi. Isn't it nice to snuggle up with a book? It's so cozy. I know. What else do you like to do, Kashi? Oh, I like to do puzzles, and I like to build with my blocks, and um, get cozy under the blankets. Me too. That sounds great on a rainy day. Well, let's see what the word of the day is. Oh, wait, did you say something? I was so busy reading. <laughs> yes, Kashi. I said, let's see what the word of the uh -huh, day is. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's see what it is. Can you read that, Kashi? Precipitation. That's right, it is precipitation. Do you know what precipitation is? Does it mean um, water that comes out of the sky? That's and it can be snow or water or rain? That's right, exactly. Well, are you ready for the summer game code? That's right, summer code. Here it is. It's... Oh, it's seven letters. It has all the colors in it. It shows up after a rainstorm and legend says there's a pot of gold at the end of it. So Kashi, if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for big points. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Do you ever wonder what to do when it's raining outside and you are stuck inside? Well, what if you decided to use the rain to help you create something? I'm going to show you how to paint with rain. So first, you just want to take any kind of paint that you have. I'm just using some watercolors and I'm 
putting them on a piece of paper. You can do any kind of drawing. You can just do a pattern, different colors. I'm just going to create some circles on this piece of paper with my paint. And then when I'm done with it, I will show you how we can use the rain to help finish our painting. And when you have painted everything on that page that you want to paint on there, you are going to take it outside and put it in the rain. So let's see what happens to my piece of paper as the rain starts to fall on it. See those drops? They're starting to spread the paint like a different kind of paintbrush. Here's a drawing I created with some magic marker instead of paint. I wonder what this will look like if I take it outside and let the raindrops add their magic touch to my drawing. Look at the marks that the rain left on my drawing. That's so cool. See what you could do with the rain and your art. Where do all those raindrops go when it rains? We're here with Susan Bryan, who builds rain gardens and teaches other people how to make them right here in Ann Arbor. That's me. So Susan, what are rain gardens and how are they useful? Good question. Well, a rain garden is a garden that does two jobs. It captures all the rain that falls on it from the sky and lands right on it and it soaks that water in. But it does a second job too. It soaks in all the water that comes off a roof or a driveway that flows into the rain garden and then the rain garden soaks that water in too. So it does double duty. It also cleans that water. So the water that comes off those surfaces may not be super clean. It may have pollution from the petrochemicals or oils that come from a car, or it could be just from the shingles and what the shingles are made of. It could be from bird poop or animal poop, all sorts of gross stuff. Without a rain garden, it would get washed all the way into the street, into the drains in the street, into a pipe, all the way to the river and that's not clean that's not fun for birds or fish or kids who want to swim in the Huron River and have fun there go tubing stuff like that so by putting the water into a rain garden the rain garden cleans it and lets it soak into the ground that's what a rain garden does wow so you've created rain gardens yourself how do you make one are they hard to make that's right, I've built a rain garden, uh, a small one at my house, and then another small one in the backyard at my house. They're not that hard to make if you like to shovel. So if you like to shovel, then they're kind of fun to make, actually. First, if you follow that raindrop to figure out where that rain is going, and it's going maybe to a place that's far enough away from your house, like 10 feet away from your house, that's a place where you could put a rain garden. All you need to do is kind of dig and sculpt the soil so that the water will puddle. And when the water puddles there, you plant some plants and that helps uh, the water soak in. And there you are, you have a rain garden. Susan, you've helped many people learn how to build rain gardens. So how many rain gardens are there in Ann Arbor? I've talked to a lot of people about rain gardens. Now in Ann Arbor, we're up to more than 500. So lots and lots of people have built rain gardens in Ann Arbor. One of the ways you can actually get some help for how to build a rain garden is maybe look around your neighborhood and find someone who has a rain garden sign in their yard and ask them about it. How did you build it? Was it hard? What advice can you give me? Oh, that's a good tip. So what's your favorite thing about rain gardens? Uh, my favorite thing I think is that it makes people curious about the world. Once they've built their rain garden, so they've dug it and they put in plants and maybe a tree in that rain garden, every time it rains, people get all excited. They run outside, they see what's happening. Is the water getting into the rain garden? Is it soaking in? Is it puddling? They wanna know what's going on. So I love that it um, starts all that curiosity in people. 
The second thing that I love about rain gardens is sitting quietly in my rain garden and listening and looking for birds and butterflies. And they're just doing their thing and I like watching them do their thing. Wow, rain gardens are so cool. Thanks for talking with us today about them, Susan. Thanks so much for having me. You can watch a cool video that Susan made about rain gardens or learn how to become a master rain gardener yourself by heading to aadl.org slash the Saturday show. What is it? It has numbers going down from the top to the bottom. And it's sort of a cone shape with this flat, pointy end. But the top has a curved open end that looks like it could be filled with something. What is it? Fishing in the rain? Mmm, fish. Yep, and when I was a kid, I used to love riding my bike around right after it rained. It was magical. That sounds fun, Toby. Yeah, it was, Otto. In particular, I remember the smells. What kind of smells are you talking about, Toby? Well, here, let's take a break. Brian's going to show us exactly what I'm talking about. Hey folks, well, we finally got a good spring rain last night after a little dry spell. You can see the woods and the creek behind me are flooded. And I'm out here because there are just so many cool sensory things to experience after a good rain. One of which is just the smell that's on the air. It smells amazing out here. And did you know that that smell is actually being caused by chemistry that's happening in the earth and air? Check it out. The biggest contributor to this smell is geosmin. Geosmin is an organic compound produced by various microorganisms, including blue-green algae and other kinds of bacteria. It has a musky, earthy aroma that the human nose is extremely sensitive to, and it's largely responsible for the distinct taste of beets, as well as that wonderful smell of damp soil. In fact, the word itself is derived from the Greek words geo, meaning earth, and osme, meaning smell. This smell actually has its own cool name, petrichor, which refers specifically to the pleasant earthy smell when rain falls on dry soil. Like geosmin, the word petrichor is also derived from two Greek words, petros, meaning rock or stone, and ichor, which in Greek mythology was an ethereal fluid that circulated through the bodies of the gods. Now why ichor? What does that refer to here? Well, in addition to geosmin, petrichor is caused by an oil exuded by certain plants during dry spells. This oil is absorbed by soil and rocks and then released into the air as aerosols during a rain. And if that rain is accompanied by a thunderstorm, you might also notice the smell of another compound on the air, trioxygen, or O3, better known as ozone, which gives off a sharp, pungent odor, which many folks can smell even before a storm has started. Ah, the smell of science. I'm sure we're all a little familiar with the world's tropical rainforests, like those in South America, Central Africa, and Indonesia. But did you know there are rainforests right here in the United States? 
This is the Hoh Rainforest, located in western Washington state. Hoh Rainforest is a temperate rainforest and is much cooler than the tropical rainforests located near the Earth's equator. With an annual rainfall of over 10 feet of rain a year, Hoh Rainforest is one of the wettest places in America. Mosses and ferns layer the floor of Hull, and up above, towering Sitka spruce trees announce themselves as some of the tallest trees in the country. All the rain prevents natural wildfires from resetting the ecosystem of the rainforest, and because of that, it is one of the most biologically dense places in the world. Bears, black-tailed deer, tree frogs, marbled murrelets, look how cute he is and banana slugs call the whole rainforest their home. So next time you're looking for a rainforest adventure, don't look too far from home. Just remember to bring an umbrella. Wow, this is so fluffy. <laughs> Katie, what are you doing? Is that my shaving cream? rain inside. Yeah, if I add shaving cream in a glass, I can make it rain. Here, let me take a look at the directions. Okay. All right, this does look pretty cool and it does simulate rain. Would you like to start over again and this time do it together? Yeah, that would be Let's make it rain! Okay, but just to be clear, we are not making it rain inside the house. We are going to do a science experiment where we can make a storm in a jar. Okay, Katie, we followed our directions. We have everything we need. We've got shaving cream, food coloring, a glass three quarters full of water, a spoon. We also need another cup with half a cup of water. Okay, we're ready. Now, first part is to put the food coloring in the water. Let's, can we do blue? I would love to do blue. Blue is my favorite color. Amanda, can you do it? I don't want to get my paws dirty. Sure. All right, so we're going to do blue. We're going to put 10 drops of food coloring in the bowl. That's half cup of water. You ready? Okay, now the shaving cream. This is the best part. Okay, you ready? All right, Katie, I'm gonna do this because I don't want this all over my table. I know, I know, you know what mess is. That's why she put a towel down. I did, I did. Okay, we're gonna fill the shaving cream up. You ready? We're gonna put shaving cream. All right, one more. Whoops, making a mess. And then we're gonna smush it down. Flatten it out. Okay, now we are gonna add spoons of the blue water to our shaving cream. Okay, I'm so excited, let's do it, let's make it rain. Now what's happening is the shaving cream is dense like clouds that are in the sky. And as the clouds fill up with rain, like our shaving cream is filling up with food coloring, when the cloud is full, the rain releases. Let's keep going, make it rain. And it's raining, it's raining. There we go, we made it rain inside the glass. Wow, that was so cool. Hey Amanda, do you think we can do it again but maybe use red? I would love to do that. See, I knew we could make it rain inside the house. Well fellas, I've had fun hanging out with you this morning. I think I'm gonna go head to my bed and curl up with a good book. That sounds good, Fred. I think I'll do the same once the show is over. Well, Otto, what else have we got for today? Well, 
I asked Professor Encephalon to tell us a little bit more about where water goes after it leaves the sky. That sounds cool, dude. Dial it up. Here we go. You know, with all the rain we've been having lately, I've developed a leak in the ceiling. Ah, oh, but I'll catch that pesky and cowardly drip one way or another. I've set out a series of cups and bowls to do just that. But this reminds me a lot of watersheds or drainage basins. A watershed is an area of land such that if a drop of rain falls, it will end up in a stream or tributary and probably feed into another river. So rain will end up in one or another watershed. Now watersheds are usually separated by some kind of ridge, a hill or mountain range perhaps. In the United States, the largest watershed is the Mississippi, represented here by this large wooden bowl. A drop of rain that falls from Montana to Pennsylvania and Minnesota to Mississippi will end up in this bowl. Well, hopefully not the bowl, but the actual river. The Mississippi drains 31 states and two Canadian provinces. I hope you've learned a little something about watersheds. And now to that drip. It's a rain gauge. A rain gauge is a simple device that's used to record the amount of rainfall in a certain period. That pointy end goes in the ground, and then it's sunny right now, but let's imagine this is rain, filling up the rain gauge. So now the rain gauge tells us that we've had a little bit more than two inches of rain in a certain period of time. The gentle fall of rain can be soothing, calming, and peaceful. But did you know it can also be extreme? Heavy rain can cause flooding and landslides. In addition to rain, water can also fall from the sky in the form of snow, sleet, freezing rain, and hail. The biggest ball of hail ever fell in South Dakota in 2010, and it was eight inches across. Awesome! Depending on their size, raindrops fall to the ground at a speed in between 15 and 25 miles per hour. That's faster than I can run. The record for most rainy days belongs to Kauai, Hawaii, which has had up to 350 rainy days per year. The Meghalaya state of India is the wettest place in the world. They receive an amazing average of 11,971 millimeters of rainfall every year. That's almost 40 feet of rain per year. Radical! It can even rain in outer space. On the planet Venus, it rains sulfuric acid. Due to the intense heat on Venus, it usually evaporates before it hits the ground. That's extreme!